A mysterious force has been working against my colony of desert long-legged ants, named the Raiders of Arrakis. They've been on quite the journey this past year, growing from just a handful of workers into an army now approaching 50, but a curse has plagued their colony from the beginning. Back when the colony was new, they started losing workers. One by one, the colony shrank until it was just three workers and the queen. That's when I put them in an incubator and things started to turn around. Their numbers began increasing once again, and they even surpassed their rivals, my colony of rough harvester ants, named the bulldozers. But even though their numbers are increasing, workers are continuing to die off at an alarming rate, and I have no idea why. And with another five dead just this week, something needs to change. This is the story of how I moved my long-legged ants in an attempt to stop these mysterious deaths. The past several weeks, I've been trying to isolate the issue by going through a list of everything that I can think of that could be killing them. If you're having trouble with one of your own colonies, these may be helpful factors for you to consider as well. Just know that the needs of the ants can vary greatly between species. Number 1. Clean Water their original test tube barely had any water at all, but I have since given them a clean tube, so they're good to go there. Same goes for humidity, which is provided by the sponge. For food, because these are mainly carnivorous ants, I feed them a variety of crickets, fruit flies, mealworms, and occasionally some nectar. But it's the same food that I feed my other colonies, who are doing just fine. And it's not like they're dying all at once, as you would expect if they were eating tainted food. So, I'm crossing that one off as well. Heat. Because these are desert ants, I've been giving them plenty of heat with a gradient, so that shouldn't be an issue either. Next, I checked for mites, which can infest ant colonies and cause death. But upon closer inspection of the bodies, they were clean. The last thing that I can think of is that it has something to do with the substrate. Perhaps the sand is somehow tainted with chemicals or harmful bacteria. That could explain why they moved all of the dirt to the back of the outworld, away from the entrances to their nests. This seemed like a reasonable guess, and I don't have anything to lose here. Plus, the colony is reaching a good size where I can move them into a formicarium. So let's do it. Let's give them a new home and see if the issue subsides. This is the nest I've chosen. It has white walls which will make them easy to see, and you can attach more modules as the colony grows. The raiders aren't large enough to occupy this entire nest just yet, so this red tab is here to keep the chambers separated until they need more space. Since the water tower for humidity is in the bottom chamber, I'll attach the outworld on the side like this, at least until they have access to the full nest. To make the outworld look nice, I added this dirt that I collected out in the desert, close to their natural habitat, so there shouldn't be anything harmful in here. But this outworld can only fit one test tube, so I'll have to attach a second one to hold the other tube during the move. Now we have to prep the nest and make it more appealing than their current home, otherwise the ants will stay right where they are. So first, I'll need to hydrate the nest. In a test tube setup, humidity and drinking water are conveniently provided by the sponge, but with a nest like this, they need to be provided separately. This cavity holds water which increases the humidity of the nest which is important for the brood's development. Next, we'll add this red cover, which will make the nest seem nice and dark. Ants can't see red light very well, so this allows them to feel safe while allowing us to peek inside. And finally, this is a heated nest, so we'll plug it in and set it to a cozy temperature because these ants like it hot. Now we're ready for the move. Okay, how do we do this smoothly? There's bound to be chaos either way, so I guess I'll just go for it. Moving the first tube now. Oh wow, that was surprisingly easy. They don't even seem bothered by it at all. Now for the original test tube, their main home. Placing them in now. There was some commotion going on inside the nest. Suddenly, their dark home was exposed to the light, and they appeared to be in a new area. I watched the entrance of the nest to see which brave worker would be the first to venture outside. And we have a winner! Not wasting any time, she soon discovered there was an opening in the wall. She entered, discovering the spacious cavern inside. Then she thought, I'm gonna need some backup for this, and left. Meanwhile, in the test tube on the other side of the nest, nothing was happening. 
and I mean that literally. Not a single ant was moving a muscle. They were just standing there like little statues. Interesting observation, but not actually interesting to observe. So we'll come back to them. The explorer that found the cave had already spread the word, and the colony had mounted an expedition to investigate every corner of the newly found tunnels. The ants continued to communicate with each other about what they were finding in this new world. Even the Duchess herself made an appearance at the nest's entrance. As we've seen before, the Duchess is not a shy queen. Most other queens stay deep in the nest where it's safe, but she's pretty quick to jump straight into the action. A warrior queen. As more and more ants began occupying the cave, it didn't take long at all before the workers decided that this would make a good home for the colony. Within about three minutes, I already saw workers starting to move the brood. This was definitely the fastest I'd ever seen a colony initiate a move. I took it as a sign that for whatever reason, they weren't very happy with their old home. And there goes the queen. I checked in on the other side, only to find that nothing has happened? Still? <laughs> Why are they frozen like that? Maybe this is just the sleeping tube. Just look at the difference in activity level. Or maybe, oh, I get it now. These are union workers. Why work more than you need to, right? The stranded workers that were left behind in the old outworld were very confused, wandering around, wondering where everyone went. This little one had returned home with a testy cricket leg. Oh, uh, sorry, tasty cricket leg only to find that home wasn't there anymore. I guess it's time to reunite them with the rest of the colony. Come with me! I can show you the world. And there we go. One by one, I started scooping them up. However, being the feisty little fighters they are, they like to attack anything that gets too close, including the brush. Wow, you got quite the grip there, don't ya? Just really hanging onto those bristles. <sighs> okay, you can let go now. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Oh man, I really gotta stop. Mm. This was kind of funny to film the first time, but got real old real quick because the rest of them also clamped down on the brush and wouldn't let go for several minutes. Come on, get off you little doofus. I don't even know what to do here. Can I use tweezers to... No, I'd pop their little head. Fear me, puny ant. <laughs> Please get off. Well, that was exhausting, but I finally got all the little suckers out of there. Oh, we got a runner. Where do you think you're going? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Get back in there. Surely by now, the other test tube is still standing there? Yo, what's going on? Well, I can see we're making a lot of progress over here. What are you doing? Just spinning around, huh? See, this is what blows my mind about ants. Collectively, they accomplish amazing things. They build incredible structures, manage fungus farms for food, raise and protect livestock. They even rebalance the delegation of labor roles when the workforce has too few workers doing a particular task. And yet, the individual ant is as dumb as a tree stump. This phenomenon of a bunch of stupid things coming together to make really smart things is called emergence, by the way. It happens all over nature and it's fascinating. You should look it up. Okay, where were we? Since the other half of the colony had now fully moved out of their original test tube, I figure we can consolidate down a bit. So I'll transfer our second tube of um, less motivated workers to the other side, disconnect the outworld, pick up Spinderella here who got left behind, and now we can watch the rest of the colony move in. And move in they did. The other workers wasted no time transferring the rest of the brood into the new nest. Now that the raiders of Arrakis have settled in, let's take a tour of their new home. Hopefully, this new setup will finally put an end to the mysterious deaths, and allow the raiders' numbers to really take off. There have already been some interesting developments that I've seen from them, along with some odd behaviors like digging a ring around their water tower? But we'll save that for another time, as the story of the ants marches on. If you enjoyed this story, drop a like and check out some of my other videos. Thanks for watching.